is Nine News with Natalia Cooper. Good evening. There's been a bombshell split verdict in the trial of former Jetstar pilot Greg Lynn. He was found guilty of killing missing camper Carol Clay, but cleared of murdering her companion, Russell Hill. Let's go live now to Reid Butler in Melbourne. Reid, this case has captivated the nation. Yes, Natalia, and it was certainly a day of shocks too, namely that split verdict, as you say. But we're also learning revelations that until now we haven't been able to report due to legal reasons, among them the fact that the prosecution had tried to bring up Greg Lynn's former wife, Lisa. She died in 1999 after ingesting a lethal cocktail of sleeping tablets and alcohol. Her family has said that they believe that Greg Lynn was responsible for that death, although the coroner uh, ultimately ruled that it was suicide. More on that in a moment. We also know that Victoria Police had been secretly recording the ex-Jetstar pilot, capturing him at one point, talking to, him, talking to himself about nude beaches and taking nude photographs after hearing a radio news report about the missing campers in his truck. Arguably bizarre, but ultimately inadmissible, according to the judge. Regardless, though, the jury did today rule that Greg Lynn murdered Carol Clay, but in perhaps the biggest twist of all. They also ruled that he was not guilty of the murder of her secret lover, Russell Hill. Tiffany Genders has more. Greg Lynn, the pilot who went bush to hunt deer and wound up a killer. The father of three took a sip of water before learning his fate at 12.48pm. Accused of murdering Carol Clay and Russell Hill, only one charge could be proven. The jury believing the prosecution argument that Lynn shot the 73-year-old woman because she witnessed the stabbing of her camping companion. But there was doubt whether Hill's death amounted to murder. How are the families feeling, Mr Portradu? I can't say anything on behalf of the family. Sorry. It began as a missing persons case in March 2020. The elderly couple were former childhood sweethearts hiding their love affair in Victoria's high country. There are serious concerns tonight for a man and woman in their 70s. Police found their discarded campsite, but no bodies, appealing on 60 Minutes for information about this four-wheel drive towing a trailer. This information that we release today will be, I think, a big step towards solving this mystery. Lynn and his wife were watching, unaware their home was bugged. She remarked, I'll admit it does look like your car and trailer. It really does. He responded, that's not funny, sweet pea. The pilot of 30 years repainted the vehicle and was captured removing its awning. He was arrested in November 2021, drawing a map that led detectives to the remains. The Melbourne man took the stand at his own trial, arguing both deaths were a tragic accident. Lynn claimed Russell had accused him of hunting too close to the couple's camp. He said Hill stole his shotgun and, in a struggle, it fired, striking Ms Clay in the head. The men then fought again. This time, Lynn argued Mr Hill fell onto a large kitchen knife, suffering a fatal wound to his heart. He did admit to a calculated cut cover up. Panicking about his life and career, he torched the campsite and moved the bodies before returning later to burn them. Lynn's fate was left in the hands of a jury of six men and six women who on their seventh day of deliberations announced the split verdict. Son Geordie left with nothing to say. Geordie, is there anything your family would like to say on behalf of your dad to the families of Carol and Russell? Russell's daughter Colleen was stoic outside court after earlier fighting back tears. A statement from the family said they are both relieved and devastated at the verdicts. There was not enough evidence to be sure of how Russell died. The accused was the only person who saw and experienced what happened. He was also the only person who emerged alive. Now a convicted killer, Lynn faces life in prison. Tiffany Genders, Nine News. 
And so Greg Lynn is spending his first night behind bars at Melbourne Assessment Prison behind me there as a convicted murderer. You would have to imagine he is considering an appeal. Lawyers say he might have a decent chance considering just how long the jury deliberations dragged out and the fact that there was just such a lack of evidence, namely because Greg Lynn destroyed it all. I can also tell you tonight, Natalia, that police will be asking the coroner to reopen its investigation into the death of his former wife, Lisa Lee. So this story has a long way to go yet. OK, Reid, thank you. In our other major story this evening, Julian Assange is tonight in Thailand, the first stop on his long journey home to Australia. The WikiLeaks founder has walked free from a UK jail after accepting a plea deal with the United States. Let's go straight to Europe correspondent Brett McLeod in London. Brett, this caught a lot of people by surprise. Well, Natalia, it seems odd to say after a saga that's dragged on through the courts for over 12 years, but it was very sudden how it all came to a conclusion. Most Britons didn't know until they woke up this morning that Julian Assange not only wasn't in prison at Belmarsh anymore, he wasn't even in the country, he was halfway around the world after signing that deal with the United States government. It is a saga which has seen him in both Belmarsh prison and the Ecuadorian embassy for seven years before that. Celebrities coming and going and taking up his cause all because of those WikiLeaks documents being released on the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. Hayley Francis gives us the details of how this latest chapter played out. Peering out of a plane window, Julian Assange almost home. The Australian whistleblower arriving on a private jet early this evening, touching down at Bangkok Airport, one step closer to freedom. Totally overwhelmed. We've been fighting for Julian's freedom for many, many years. Assange now only hours away from arriving in the northern Mariana Islands, a US territory north of Papua New Guinea. Just 4,600 kilometres from Australia, the closest the 52-year-old's been in more than a decade. A US federal judge will there sign off on his plea deal around 9am tomorrow. Julian has a couple of hurdles to jump through yet before he's safe and sound on Australian soil, so we've got all our fingers and toes crossed to make... Uh, to to give him all our positive energy that, um, that that will happen. Assange no longer a prisoner at London's Belmarsh Prison. Released, boarding a plane, departing the United Kingdom. He was out before word was. The result of quiet diplomacy and an extraordinary agreement with the United States. Under the agreement, Assange will plead guilty to one count of espionage, carrying a sentence of 62 months in prison. But with time already served, he'll be free to go, ending a more than decade-long standoff with America. If you're seeing this, it means he is out. Things are moving very quickly and it's very difficult for us to plan or even play out uh, the next few hours and days. Uh, but if everything goes well, Julian will be on a plane on the way to freedom. To start a life in Australia with his wife and their two young sons, FaceTiming them last night, moments before boarding. It's a whirlwind of emotions. I mean, I'm just... Uh... Elated, frankly, it's just incredible. I don't know. Uh, it can't. Feels like it's not real. It was the release of this video in April 2010, which made WikiLeaks infamous. Light them all up. Two traffic, two Come on, fire! Classified U.S. military footage shown to the world. Two Apache helicopters launching a deadly strike on unarmed civilians in Baghdad. The Iraq war was a war of optics, and this video changed everything. Julian Assange hurt the United States government. He put the lives of our troops in danger. But what he did, some of what he did, was very similar to the way that journalists conduct their business. Assange and WikiLeaks went on to release a trove of more than 700,000 documents, top secret records handed over to the Australian by former US Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning. It was and remains one of America's biggest and most damaging leaks of classified information. Uh, do you have a response to Australia's request that you eventually assign this prosecution? 
considering. The case has dragged on for too long. Yeah. There is nothing to be gained by his continued incarceration and we want him brought home to Australia. We, we just got to be still cautious, still cautious on how this proceeds because the end has not arrived. But it is near. From WikiLeaks, as he returns to Australia, we thank all who stood by us, fought for us. Julian's freedom is our freedom. I don't think without that support of the Australian population uh, that Julian would be free right now. So um, to everyone out there, big cheers to you. And from a mother who has waited 14 years, I'm grateful that my son's ordeal is finally coming to an end. This shows the importance and power of quiet diplomacy. So I'm real rest time with his family, uh, with the people who love him, uh, I think is going to do him the world of good. For Julian Assange, this is the closing chapter in a years-long saga, which has spanned countries and continents. In Sydney, Hayley Francis, Nine News. It's clear the Australian government has been lobbying the US and British governments behind the scenes in order to get today's outcome with Julian Assange almost free once again. It's been a very long process and Damon Ryan looks back at how that played out. An editor, a journalist, but for 14 years Julian Assange better known as a walking, talking headline. <laughs> Born in Townsville, Queensland, the gifted child became a self-confessed computer nerd and gamer. Moving to Melbourne, Assange was in his 20s when he was charged with computer hacking. The whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. In 2006, Assange found WikiLeaks with a group of activists to publish leaked documents. In 2010, his biggest scoop, evidence of alleged war crimes by Americans in Iraq. This is Bushmaster 7, Roger, engage. It left him a marked man. The US had him in its sights with the potential death sentence for espionage. The United States strongly condemns the illegal disclosure of classified information. But WikiLeaks continued its data dump, hundreds of thousands of secret US military documents and diplomatic cables sent to major news outlets. Assange was placed on Interpol's most wanted list, not for hacking, but for allegedly sexually assaulting two women in Sweden. I don't have too many fears about being extradited to Sweden. Uh, there are much bigger concerns about being extradited to United States. Fearing the charges would be used by the Americans to assist in his extradition to the US, Assange skipped bail and took refuge in the Ecuador embassy in London after being granted political asylum. How sweet it is. For seven years, it was his diplomatic safe house until he was carried out for overstaying his welcome. Assange found himself in a prison cell, sentenced to 50 weeks jail for breaching his bail. The longer he was locked up, the campaign for his freedom grew louder. It attracted star power. Baywatch's Pamela Anderson was a constant visitor. He's a good man. He's an incredible person. You know, I, I, I love him. In 2022, in jail, Assange married his long-term partner, Stella Morris. I don't know what to say. I'm very happy. I'm very sad. The mother of his two children, he fathered inside the Ecuadorian embassy. Five years of court battles, the US will call it a draw. Julian Assange and his supporters will claim it's a victory. It is the role of good journalism to take on powerful abuses. And when powerful abuses are taken on, there is always a back reaction. Damien Ryan, Nine News. We're still getting details about the process which saw Julian Assange leave the country. The first bail hearing was actually last Thursday before he hopped on a plane yesterday, hours before the information became public. So Natalia, incredibly secretive for a man who's used to exposing secrets. Yes, Brett McLeod, thank you. Stuck in a hole at risk of caving in, a man has been successfully rescued after a precision mission in his Perth backyard. Jamie Freestone has the latest from the scene. 
This was a major and delicate rescue operation lasting three and a half hours. And late this evening, the 46-year-old was stretched out into the back of an ambulance. He'd been trapped in a three-metre deep hole in the backyard. The alarm raised just before 3pm this afternoon. The man had been digging the hole with his landlord for the last four days, searching for the sewer line. But the sand gave way this afternoon, trapping one of his legs. As urban search and rescue crews worked to shore up and stabilise the hole, the man remained in good spirits somewhat embarrassed. A specialist vacuum truck was eventually brought in to assist with the rescue and remove the sand and shortly after the man was freed. Once they were digging him out we hooked him up and he was under his own weight but with assistance from fireys we were able to remove him from the hole. He's in a stable condition and has been taken to hospital to be checked over. Former NRL star Jared Hayne will not face a fourth trial over an alleged sexual assault in 2018. Hayne was released from jail earlier this month when his conviction was overturned by the Court of Criminal Appeal. The 36-year-old had been behind bars for more than a year after a jury found him guilty of two counts of sexual intercourse without consent in April last year. King Charles and Queen Camilla have welcomed Japan's Emperor Naruhito and his wife to London. They're on a three-day state visit, which includes a military parade, carriage procession and state banquet. The trip, which was postponed during the COVID pandemic in 2020, is to celebrate the military, cultural and scientific ties between the two countries. A truck at Heathrow Airport caught fire today, dangerously close to an aircraft. The vehicle was sitting directly next to a Boeing A320, the flames and smoke licking at the plane's tail. No passengers were on board at the time. The fire was quickly put out. Lawyers for actor Alec Baldwin have made a last-minute attempt to have his involuntary manslaughter case dismissed. His team argued the gun used in the shooting was destroyed during forensic testing by the FBI, stripping them of a proper defence. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed on the Rust movie set in 2021. You're watching Nine's Late News right across Australia. Still to come, why Labor Senator Fatima Payman faces expulsion from her party. Six suspects arrested after a terrifying attack in Adelaide. And the spirit of cricket questioned at the T20 World Cup as Australia bows out in the Super 8 stage. Labor Senator Fatima Payman's position in the party hangs in the balance tonight after she crossed the floor and voted to recognise Palestinian statehood. Claudia Vridoljak reports. Senator Fatima Payman says she hopes to continue representing Western Australia as a Labor politician after crossing the floor and siding with the Greens to vote on a motion recognising Palestine as a state. She's the first Labor politician to do so in almost 40 years and says it's the most difficult decision she's had to make, maintaining that not only did she uphold her own convictions but the party ethos. I am proud of what I did today and I'm bitterly disappointed that my colleagues do not feel the same way. Her future, now to be decided by the caucus led by Anthony Albanese, a spokesperson has stated Senator Payman maintains strong Labor values, also pointing to previous caucus members having crossed the floor without facing expulsion. It could be months before a decision is made. An innocent person has been threatened with knives and had a rock hurled at him by a gang of teens at an Adelaide shopping centre. Samantha Hogan, the weapons were found when police swooped on six suspects. That's right, Natalia, and our Nine News camera was here as it all unfolded. Knives were allegedly seized from the gang after they confronted a man outside a bus stop here at Arndale Shopping Centre around 1.30 this afternoon. Police swooped on the group after they tried to scatter in nearby streets, the youngest just 13 and the others 14 and 16. It's also alleged they hurled a rock at the victim, injuring his chin. And this comes just two days after another Another incident where a, a gang of teens with weapons sent another shopping centre into full lockdown. Whether this is um, of the same groups that are um, perpetrating the violence, yeah, it is a little worrying. Yeah, definitely, especially how young they're getting. Like, um, it makes me worried about having my daughter at the shops. 
The six youths have tonight been charged with aggravated affray and three of them with aggravated assault. They'll be expected to face court tomorrow and they've been denied bail. Natalia. Samantha Hogan in Adelaide, thank you. Australia's T20 World Cup is over tonight, suffering two devastating blows in the space of a few hours. First, the Aussies went down to fierce rivals India, then Afghanistan beat Bangladesh to seal their fate. Glued to the TV at their team hotel, Australia could only watch on as they crashed out of the World Cup. Snatching their spot in the semi-finals. It's unbelievable. I don't have any words to describe my feelings. It's a situation Australia could have avoided. That's big. But they couldn't remove Rohit Sharma, India's captain crushing the Aussies' attack, blasting 92 runs of 41 balls to steer his side to a total of 205. An enormous chase for Australia. They couldn't afford to slip up. David Warner went for six in his final knock for his country, leaving Travis Head to take India on. Launched. His 76 gave the Aussies a chance, but as the wickets fell... Oh, not at all, uh, this is top bowling. Winning moved out of reach. Yeah, it's disappointing. Uh, we're still technically a chance. Come on, Bangladesh. <laughs> An upset was on the cards, but once Afghanistan edged ahead, they did all they could to stay there. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I'm not accepting that. Playing for rain, the spirit of cricket was back in the spotlight. Much to the Aussies' amusement, Adam Zampa calling it a rain string injury. But it didn't stop Afghanistan's dream run into the final four for the first time. And Australia now on their way home. Sam Jordan, Nine News. After the break, all the finance news with our guru, Scott Phillips. Time to talk all things finance with our late news money man, Scott Phillips from Motley Fool. A strong day on the share market today. Natalia, good evening. It certainly was the best day in six weeks. The market putting on well over 1.5% on both the major indices. Every single sector in the green, so not much to complain about. Led higher by materials and energy, up 1.8 and 2.2 percent respectively. KFC franchises are performing well as people continue to feel the cost of living pinch. They really are actually it's incredible. Collins Foods, one of the largest franchises, I think might be the largest franchise in Australia, having a really good result. So their profit was up fivefold, revenue up more than 10 percent. Now some of that was from same store sales, in other words, the ones were already open more than a year. The rest of that came from new store openings. So we're certainly uh, enjoying our KFC. The company also, the franchisor of Taco Bell in Australia, and they're pausing that expansion, it seems. Those tacos at least not resonating with Australians. OK. On the other hand, the outlook, uh, it is not so good for Star. Poor old Star Entertainment. They've really gone from, been beaten from pillar to post. Yesterday, the shares were down. Today, down again. The reality is revenues are going to come in lighter again than management expected even two months ago. Remember, we're talking about the June financial year here. We're almost there and they're still downgrading those numbers. Even worse, their before-tax profit likely to halve year on year. Still plenty of dramas for Star Casino. Mm, and what can we expect when Wall Street opens? We get some good news on that one. The US markets in early futures trading predicting a gain of about a tenth of 1% when their markets open later tonight. Scott, thank you. Thanks, Natalia. And I'll be back with your national weather forecast right after this break. Let's take a look at your national weather forecast now. To the charts and a low in the bight will bring showers and storms to parts of South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. Showers and storms for WA due to a cold front and moist onshore winds feeding into eastern Queensland will generate showers. So to Brisbane tomorrow, mostly sunny and 24 degrees. Sydney will be sunny and 21. Melbourne a shower or two and 14, up to 15 millimetres of rain for Adelaide. Showers and a possible storm in Perth and Darwin will be sunny sunny and 31 degrees. Looking ahead to Thursday and a shower or two and 22 degrees in Brisbane. More sunshine for Sydney and a top of 19 degrees. A couple of showers and 15 in Melbourne, a shower or two and 17 in Adelaide. More showers and another storm for Perth and a lovely warm 32 degrees for Darwin. 
And that wraps up Nine's Late News for this Tuesday. Our next news is at 5am, followed by the Today Show. I'm Natalia Cooper. Thank you for joining us and good night.